Kellogg, and I'd like to call to order this meeting of the Barbary Select Board on Tuesday, the 5th of September. Uh, this is an exceptional meeting uh, because uh, Monday is a holiday, so we decided to meet on this Tuesday. And the first item on the agenda is to approve the agenda. Do I have a motion? So moved. I'll second. All right, moved and seconded. Any discussion? We just noted that real estate acquisition will also be part of the executive session and that the AMPS Art Gallery has a full-time <coughs> occasion permit for 915 also as part of the consent. Okay. Board members are comfortable with that. So we have uh, an amendment to the motion. Uh, any further discussion on the amendment? All in favor of the amendment, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? That passes. Now we'll be voting on the uh, amended agenda. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? All right, we have an approved amended agenda. Next is the consent agenda items, including the one that was just added uh, by virtue of the amendment. Do I have a motion? Move to approve consent agenda items. Second. Okay, moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Consent items have been approved. Now we have the public session. Anyone wishing to address any items not on the warned agenda uh, can please come forward and I request that you keep your items to three minutes. If it requires further discussion, we'll put it on the agenda for the next meeting. Mike. Just real quickly, I would encourage any of the board members, the um, Vermont League of Cities and Town uh, Town Fair is happening the 26th and the 27th. Um, I've attended numerous times, both as a vendor as well as, um, as a participant. It's well worth attending. I would encourage anyone from on the board to attend. I know I'm already paid. I know we're past the early bird, but I'm sure it's not that much more if any of the board members, any of the public also is you know, welcome to attend if they want to know about different civic matters. Just look up the agenda on the um, Vermont League of Cities and Town, um, you know, their website. Thank you. And just as a matter of public record, are we, uh, is the town gonna put the bill for uh, board members? Yes. Okay. So, be aware, Mike. Uh, and others that would like to attend. I went and attended uh, last year's event uh, where we honored uh, Bill Shaplock. It was quite, quite festive. Um, any, anything else from the public? All right, let's move forward. Uh, next item, uh, right to purchase agreement for the Stanley Wasson Hall property. This concerns a 2.5 uh, acre plot of land that uh, has been offered us uh, by the state. Uh, Tom, do you want to give us any further detail about this? Uh, sure. Um, the bill that uh, snaked its way through the legislature um, contained a provision that the land had to be used for housing. Interestingly enough, the final version did not, although I believe that's still the intent of the board. Um, at this state, at this point, all we have to do is provide uh, the state with our intent to purchase. We have until uh, June of next year to, to actually provide a, a written offer. Um, we can discuss pricing later um, and negotiate with them. Um, so it's the first step. Once we, uh, once we get to the second step, um, my hope is that the state would entertain an option agreement where we don't have to make a payment on the property or a substantial payment on the property until we have some form of development agreement uh, executed um, so we know the fate and we can decide that on our own. Um, I've talked with a number of uh, a number of people in the housing development world, but private sector and nonprofit sector, um, and they all tell me the same thing, and that's that developing multifamily housing, whether it's market rate or affordable housing, is a challenge. Um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have automatically assumed that given, given what people are paying in rent right now and given what the housing market is. Um, it's a challenge for a number of reasons.
part of it is that um, the market for single-family homes is so good that developers mm -hmm. can make such a high market. <laughs> to make the development process faster. Um, mm -hmm. The other challenge is whether it's, um, if it's affordable housing, senior housing, um, all those entities, Cathedral Square, um, Champlain Housing Trust, Town Street, they're all competing for the same pot of funds. Um, so it's, it's not a project that's gonna happen overnight. It's gonna take some years to bring to fruition, but I tend to think that um, the site could pretty reasonably accommodate a very large number of, of housing units um, <laughs> without changing the town zoning, um, without asking for any sort of a variance. Um, as of today, it could qualify for 75 units. Um, that doesn't incorporate any of the new Act 250 changes, which essentially allow for one story higher. So it could be a pretty big development, could be a pretty big addition to our grand list. It's just going to take some time to get to the finish line. And were we not to use it for housing, uh, would there be any other reason that the town should acquire this property, in your estimation? No. Just that. Mike. Pardon me, but my experience in the housing world kind of comes into play. I'm surprised why the state is not saying, making saying this is where we're at, and then we come back with a number that we may think it, that, that's how it's usually done. You don't go buy a house, say, I'll give you two, $300,000, you know, and they say, boy, I was only gonna ask 250. So that's why <coughs> I'm really a little skeptical. I would like to get a number from the state as to what they think uh, the market value is. And I think it can be used, I, I think housing would be a, 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 a huge addition and the way in, in this state housing works is by, you know, housing tax credits. If they don't get housing tax credits, unless they're doing a market rate uh, project, you know, it's probably not going to happen. And what a lot of the uh, affordable housing developers like to have either mixed kind of projects or totally, you know, low to moderate income projects. Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, yes, it, I think it's worthwhile pursuing, but I would like to get a number. And again, depending upon what that is, if it's small enough, I think we could sit on that for, you know, for a while until, you know, a, a developer can put, put their act together and, you know, develop a project. Because yes, you're, you're looking at, I've been involved in a number of low income housing projects in this town. and. Usually, they're, 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 they're going to take two, three years before they get developed. Right. And I think that's what Tom was saying. Um, and if you, you look at the, the article that they're asking us to sign, it just says, the town select board hereby affirms the town's interest in pur right. purchasing or acquiring the property and directs the municipal manager to prepare a written offer. Uh, so that is, doesn't commit us to any particular price or any any financial commitment at this point, right. the way I understand it. The other possibility is that we could use, if it's not for housing, as some sort of a business incubator space. I think that would really work well That's a good point. In, 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 in Waterbury. You know, we sometimes, I know housing is a tantamount, you know, interest, but, you know, developing business and having, you know, new creative entities come into our town could be a really plus two. Mm -hmm. How would zoning affect that, do you know, Melissa? Um, my initial reaction is it depends on what's happening. I would note that there's organizations like Waterbury Makersphere that's already doing quite a lot of that work, right. so notwithstanding our desire to support and enhance their work, um, I personally feel that housing is an important priority, but there is also potential for a combination, but I think, you know, per what went through the legislature with an interest in housing, I worry about um, 
complicating this particular um, mm -hmm. transaction and think a focus on housing feels appropriate there and not to say there might be <coughs> other worthwhile conversations. Um, in terms of zoning, it, they did in some cases want industrial. Actually, one of their locations is in Moortown for that reason, um, just to give them more flexibility for welding and the like. Mm -hmm. um, so. Agree with you a thousand percent. Okay, uh, Chris. In lieu of the housing dilemma, uh, what are the ramifications or drawbacks are there any at the state level if you were to seek uh, that property as being gifted to the town? Or is that not, is that not a option? Uh, I mean, obviously land acquisition is one of the biggest dilemmas in affordable housing. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Whether or not, I mean, mm -hmm. they say they're trying to help solve the problem. What are the drawbacks? <coughs> Would they? Is there a reason that they might not consider um, handing well, it over? As I understand the state st statute, we're supposed to pay uh, the appraised value. But uh, Tom, what, what's your answer? So the I don't know if it's statute, but I know the history is that the state's position is, you know, they acquired that property, they maintained it for some years, the taxpayers paid for it, they have an obligation to get a fair return to all the taxpayers of the state and not to give to any one town. That being said. Um, I think the state 100% recognizes everything you've said about housing, and so I'm not sure that we need to start with a high offer for this property. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, we do not yet have a motion on the table uh, about uh, approving and signing off on uh, this uh, intent. Anyone care to make it? I move to approve the Town of Waterbury Select Board Resolution in support of acquiring property from the state of Vermont and with significant apologies to our manager, Tom Lights, who sent this to me ahead of time. It's February 27th. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry because um, I... <laughs> yeah, okay. We can make that edit. Um, but otherwise, <laughs> which okay. is non-substantive. <laughs> who did send it to me ahead of time, so I'm very sorry. <laughs> All right, moved and seconded with the uh, typo corrected. Um, <laughs> any further discussion, Danny? One quick question. Would we have the opportunity to review whatever offer you put in before it goes forward? Yes, I actually, I, I don't have the legal authority to buy property without your approval. That's just, you know, say not allowed. All right. <laughs> so don't be going out and pulling a fast one. And just Okay. All right, moved and seconded. Any further discussion? I would just say out loud that the final clause is the select board hereby affirms the town's interest in, quote, purchasing or acquiring the property, just as per the discussion that was just had here. Noted. Got that? Mm -hmm. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? All right, I will start by signing this agreement. Or should I wait for the time? Yeah. I know, I'm so okay. sorry. Right. So, I checked the minutes. <laughs> Great, thank you. I thought I did too. <laughs> Next on the agenda is the letter of attestation uh, for a downtown organization to receive funds, uh, which is revitalizing Waterbury. Uh, is, I believe, the first time that the state has uh, decided to commit uh, grant funding to downtown, designated downtown organizations. Uh, what's your pleasure? Or if you want to discuss this further, anyone have comments? No? Um, talk this over with Karen. Her intent is to spend some of the money on marketing promotion and some of it on employee benefits. Um, and she's talked about that with me at some length in the past, the challenge of keeping employees at the salary benefit package she can offer, so this will help a bit with that. I think it's um, money well spent on the state's part, and I think it helps us all out. And do you know if this is a one-time thing or if this is going supposed to be an annual uh, allocation? <coughs> any, any indication? I don't have anything formal, but I think there's a, there's a fighting chance it's going to be an annual allocation. Any discussion? Anyone will wish to make a motion? Can 
Sure. You're on a roll. I move to approve the municipal's letter of attestation for the downtown vibrancy fund for the Verlies and Waterbury. Second. Okay, moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? All right, we've just approved $25,000 grant from the state to revitalize the Waterbury, our designated downtown organization. Um, <coughs> recreation, presentation, and staffing. Katarina, would you come forward? I can walk him through the, the 50,000 foot, and then we can get into some detail. And I don't know if you want to bring Bill or any other members of the recreation. No, you're, you're happy back there, Bill? Yeah. So the starting higher level and zeroing in, um, I believe the plan for two years now has been to have two full-time recreation employees. We've never been able to execute that, so I'm hoping we can now. I took our actuals for this year and, and did some forecasting, and, and the reality for this year is when summer is over, much of the budget revenues and the expenditures are out. And this year, um, on page three in line 120, um, the forecast is that the the budget was for recreation in total to to cost town taxpayers three hundred fourteen thousand dollars, and we're we think we're going to be pretty well under that, um, which is nice. Um, some things can still happen. Um, some of that depends on how much we want to transfer to the capital fund, but uh, the projects we're, we're looking at in recreation in the future, um, I don't think require us to build the capital fund. I think if we're looking at a, some, some major pool work, um, it's going to be well in the seven figures. And so having twenty or thirty thousand dollars to put down is not really not really worth saving for. It's not like we're buying a truck. We might save for three or four years. Um, <coughs> the long and short of it um, is that <coughs> pool and camp were both a challenge this year with staff turnover. We kind of got through it all. Um, we learned a lot of lessons, but I think we're going to be a lot better next year. Um, <coughs> pool was especially a challenge because the weather was absolutely terrible. Um, no kidding. <coughs> <laughs> so the, the pool was, was a, a special challenge because the weather was terrible. <laughs> so the, the long and short of what we're projecting is that if you authorize us filling the second position, uh, recreation will cost the town about $10,000 more next year on a net basis, so about 3%. We budgeted into the plan. We assume that the full-time employee took family health care, which is the most expensive, so we might see a bit of a savings there. Um, the other piece we budgeted in here is in the capital fund, um, we tentatively have $20,000 um, for Hope Davy and that's for the recreation pass, um, the accessibility. So that that would be matching grant funds. Um, Katarina is going to go out with uh, Bill Woodruff tomorrow, and they're going to get some do some estimating for how much the pass would actually cost. But my thinking is, twenty is a is a hefty down payment, and if we had to do the project and, and twenty plus a grant wasn't enough, we could make it a multi year project. But I, I tend to think, um, you know, by my estimation, it's perhaps a half mile of, of five foot wide blacktop. Um, it's not going to cost a million bucks. Um, so that's. <coughs> That's my 50,000 foot. Katarina can, can drill down as much as she wants. That's a great start. <coughs> um, I have nothing to add right now, but I'm happy to share more with you guys. What would be the, the major duties of this new position that we'd be creating? Yeah, so the um, it would be a program coordinator role. Um, we run an after school program and summer programming, and this person would be leading that after school programming and the summer programming, sort of the day to day, the what happens at camp, what happens at after school, um, so that those programs can exist without me, the recreation director, being there every day. Currently, I'm at, I'm running the after school program. Uh -huh. 
Would they be supervising staff? Yes, yeah. they would be. And I think the biggest lesson I learned from the summer um, is that we just need more adults mm -hmm. supervising programs. Mm -hmm. So this gives us one more full-time permanent adult. Uh, so, so the person is, I don't think of them as necessarily a runner who oversees all camps. It's you're sort of a presence at a main camp every day. Bill mm -hmm. Well, It's not really a new position. I mean, Two years ago, we did it. When Nick was the recreation director, we put it in the budget for different things. There were there were two positions in this year's budget, so I think they're just hopeful that they can find the people that will stick in the positions and right. do the job. So it, it's really not a new position; it's it's in the budget. And I, and I guess the other the other big lesson I'll say I learned is um, when I was at St. Albans, the city had. I think one of the premier rec departments in the state, and I'm sure they had their challenges, but we never heard about it at City Hall. Um, I heard about a lot of our challenges this year, um, not because of Katarina. Um, turnover issues, um, weather, everything related to that. Um, but I came to realize how difficult running the summer program especially is, and, and how we, I think we really need this position, and I also think that um, we rely so much on the camp counselors and they work a lot of hours and I don't think that's a great model. I hate the idea of high school kids working 50, 60 hours a week in the summer. I'd like to have double the staff next year who work half the hours. I think fresher, better staff with a smattering of some, some older folks. Um, Tom Drake has been here a lot. Um, I've told Tom Drake he has no choice. He's going to work for us next summer. <laughs> He might give us a day a week, but we'll take it. Uh, okay. So is the ask to fill this position that we now know it's existed the whole time, um, and then on top of that, <coughs> approve the tentative 20 grand for Hope Davey? That's already in the budget, isn't it? It's already in the draft. It's, it's to approve the position, understanding that we are going to ask for that rough amount and that increase from the taxpayers for recreation next year to help support it. Kerry, what happens now when like you're sick on a certain day or you have a meeting or something? Uh, I happens? don't schedule meetings for when after school occurs. Uh -huh. um, so I'm there. If I am sick, um, we do have staff there to cover. Um, and. Honestly, Tom has been helpful. I've asked other um, municipal employees to help out when, when we do need an extra hand. So this role would be a dedicated person not pulled from something else happening at the town. That makes sense to me. Any other comments or questions from the board? Anyone care to make a motion? <laughs> I make a, I'll make a motion to um, add to next year's budget a uh, second position of uh, recreation coordinator. Second. Okay. <coughs> Move and second. Does that cover? Um, I think it's okay if we seek to fill it before next yeah, year. Yeah. He wants to fill it right now. Okay. Well, we don't have a candidate, but. <laughs> we don't want to post it. Get started. Like tomorrow. So, do we need to amend the motion? Uh, I think we might. Yeah. Uh, before you start, uh, Mike, uh, Bill. Just, just to comment and reiterate. So, when I heard about adding a, a new position, I was pretty excited to hear that that would be a new position. Um, we have had and have needed um, a director and a program coordinator, um, and I think. Program is growing, and um, positions will be needed. And I thought maybe that's what we were anticipating. It'd be interesting to hear um, how many people were part of the rec department that Tom referred to that was so excellent. Um, so just to reiterate, <coughs> this is a position we've already always had, and we're doing without, and needs to be filled as quickly as possible. I thought the motion was about the spending for Hope Davy and. Maintain the position or whatever. Uh, although two separate things, but just to reiterate that that's, that's not a new position, it's not a new ask. 
anything changing in the budget right now? Or what is changing right now? Nothing would change right okay. now. The, the forecast we have for this year still shows a surplus. Okay. So then our motion is, is to, and does it need to be a motion? Or if it does, like our motion then is to um, endorse, the endorse the plan of advertising and gun position as soon as possible. Amended. <laughs> Friendly amendment. Okay. Um, let's uh, first uh, vote on the friendly amendment. Uh, any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, the amendment has been accepted. Now we're voting on uh, Mike's uh, motion to approve the plan with the uh, friendly amendment. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? All right. We have our endorsement. Thanks Thank a lot. Thank you. Appreciate it. Can I just say one clarification just because it really got me going? I was like, we definitely budgeted way more than 3000 to capital fund. And I just want to say that was the it's parks it's maintenance places. to capital fund line, not the overall. There's like with yeah. 60,000 budgeted. I just was like, I know we put more than that. Either, so I just yeah. had to say that because it was giving mm -hmm. me a lot. All right. Next, we have a police presentation and public safety uh, by Lieutenant Charles Wynn. Mm -hmm. Lieutenant Wynn? Right you That's all right. Your timing is excellent. Shocking there. As you come forward, I'd like to personally thank you and your team for uh, a number of weeks ago. We had uh, a resident from Waterbury Center come forward uh, expressing extreme concern about public safety, about uh, a resident who was acting uh, strangely and uh, threatening public safety uh, in the neighborhood. And um, within the next couple of days, uh, you and your team posted uh, six officers to that site uh, who were there for six hours until they had uh, authority to go in and uh, take the uh, person in uh, under arrest. And uh, so I want to just thank you for your responsiveness uh, to that particular issue and, and everything else you do. Yes, sir. Oh, where are you going to sir? Right there. All right. <laughs> 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 just start and uh, tell us uh, your observations of uh, how the contract's been working uh, with the town. I know that this is somewhat unusual to have uh, two officers dedicated uh, to uh, a, a municipality, uh, but uh, it's one that uh, has been going for a number of years and we wanted to get your assessment of how that's going and then uh, we can open it up to further questions. So uh, obviously you guys know I took over from Lieutenant White at the end of February, and uh, I haven't really been up to speed on all this stuff yet, so I'm just mm -hmm. getting there. Yeah. But uh, um, I appreciate you guys for, for reaching out to me and, and having me come to the meeting and stuff. It's, it's good for me to do this stuff because it makes me uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're easy. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Well, a lot of people aren't. <laughs> um, obviously, uh, you guys know about the, the incident that we, that we dealt with, with the mental health incident. And I just that, that basically, that had the whole, uh, my whole barracks pretty much at a standstill. That, that was everyone that I have. Huh. It was tied up with that for, for hours. Right. So you see the, uh, the, the system that we're working in is not the greatest. So um, I think when it works well, it, it, it's good, but you know, it's, it, I think it needs adjustments on, on a lot of levels. Mm -hmm. I know some people are uh, not happy about some of the narcotics activity and stuff. In, in town. Uh, I will say that we, we have done five search warrants here locally. Um, the people have been charged, you know what I mean? It's like a revolving door that they're right back out there doing the, the same thing. So uh, you guys obviously know Trooper Riegler, he's like made it his goal, I think, in life to, <laughs> to, to get 
narcotics out of Waterbury. He's, he's, he's doing a really good job. Uh, you guys are aware of the search warrant we just did the other day. I know. Um, can I talk about that? There, there was a press release with, with the establishment of that? Yeah. Uh, it's basically an, an unlicensed daycare. So, oh, yeah, in, in town. And uh, I don't know. I guess I'll just, well, you guys know cats out of the bag now, right? <laughs> so, if I'm going to get in trouble. I'm sure my phone will start ringing directly. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was an unlicensed daycare uh, out in town, Trooper Regler. Uh, Gain some information. Uh, I don't know. I, I believe they were dealing uh, narcotics out of the out of the, the residence for a short while. Well, I'm not sure how long they were, but from the time he got the tip to the time he was able to get a warrant was like three days. Um, we did <coughs> make an arrest on that, but uh, it's not a significant amount of narcotics or anything. It's a lot of paraphernalia and stuff, but still, uh, it's an unlicensed daycare. Yeah, and, uh, great concern. Yeah, it, it, it's it's a problem. Yep. So we had that, um, a lot of juvenile problems. Um, that takes up a lot of the uh, Waterbury Troopers' time, time here when, you know, obviously Regler wants to be doing that stuff. Have, have, I, I, I'm not familiar yet. Are, do we have like a loitering ordinance or anything like that here or public cameras or anything? <coughs> some of these not incidents that I'm aware are, of. No. Some of these, I don't know if that's something we want to think about. Uh, some of these incidents are raising to, you know, we had, we've had a shooting and uh, a stabbing involving right. juveniles. And the stabbing, uh, why the court didn't charge that as attempted murder is beyond me. Uh, she charged it. Was it because it was a minor or? Uh... Uh, I, she, uh, no. Okay, <laughs> all right. But uh, I, I mean, uh, you know, maybe one day you can see the pictures of, of the injuries and stuff. It, it, it's yeah. minor or not that, that it was a serious incident. Sure. Yeah, that's not my phone probably going off. No, it's not my phone. I bet you were getting more attendees. Sorry. Yeah. So I, I think that um, these are these are things that will help us, I think, um, maybe better enforce things. It's hard, right? Like, we're not, we're not parents, you know what I mean, to these kids and stuff. But, you know, it's hard. Why are, you know, 14, 15-year-olds, 16-year-olds running around at 11, 12, 1 o'clock in the morning out here in these parking lots and stuff and, and doing whatever that they're doing? And, you know, it's, 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 it's getting to be a problem. And on the camera issue, um, there was, I guess what I can best describe as a known drug house. Um, and I explored with Trooper Regler at the time and the state's attorney if, if we could put a camera in a public right-of-way we couldn't record the house per se, but like you get traffic going in and out of the area. And I was told that it's just not legally advisable to do that. Um, so, so, like, there, there are things, when I was in narcotics, like if we had a narcotics uh, target that we, we were interested in, we, yes, we'd have to get search warrants to, to put up what we call pole cameras or, or something, like, like a, a, a surveillance on a residence. But I'm talking about like just in parking lots and, and things like, like public spaces where nobody has an expectation of privacy, not on a specific residence, yeah. but like in, in, in these public spaces because uh, the, the shooting and, and the, uh, the staffing I, were, were like, what, where, when was that the train station? When was it the train station? Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. So I, I, I don't know if that's just something that, that we, could, we could think about. I'm sure we can ask businesses. Well, the train station yeah. is owned by Bill Shevlick would like to have a yeah, word a uh, number of years ago and continuing into just recently, there's been a lot of criminal activity in the parking lot. And I can't remember how long ago, but I approached AOT and asked them if they would put up a, a camera there. And they told me and maybe their policies have changed, but they said, no, we don't allow cameras in, in our parking lot. So, you know, it's one agency of the state saying we could use them in public spaces, but yeah. that's a place, you know, they were, they were stealing <coughs> catalytic converters there, there were, there's all kinds of drug activity there, and having a camera on one of those poles <coughs> seems like an obvious thing to do. Uh, but AOT said no, so 
So just to, for your information, this point. Okay. Yeah, and, and that's that's a, a line that we have to always walk, right? You know, it's like the, the homeless encampments that are popping up along Route 2 in a right. town and in the Waterbury and stuff. It's, it's a, so what do we do, right? Yeah. You know, is it the state, is it, it's not really criminal, right, what they're doing, but there's a bunch of civil ordinances and, and stuff like that against it, but you know, the state created this problem. We, we had these people in the hotels and then we cut the money off and kicked them out of the hotels they and gave them us. <laughs> you know what I mean? So what, where are they supposed to go and what are they supposed to do and then what am I supposed to do about it? And then if I move them, where are they gonna move to? You, you know, so it, I, I understand what you're saying so about the, the AOT thing, it, it, it's very frustrating. And I can get quotes for cameras. There's a local technician who installs them. Um, my recollection is it's something approaching $10,000 for a camera. And then they have built-in systems where they essentially give you a month's worth of data and then you record over it. But if you've got an incident in an area, a month is a pretty good amount of time to go back and preserve it. Because mm -hmm. just recently, there's been a whole bunch of things on the news about you know privacy concern, concerns by American civil Like a lot of police departments are now starting to use drones. Mm -hmm. And I think it's a pretty effective way. And I know most law-abiding people would probably say, I would give up some of my privacy rights to, you know, feel safe. <laughs> and first of all, thank you for your service. Uh, I, I, I always, <coughs> always thank everyone who's in law enforcement and military. But I think that's, that's something we have to wrangle with. What is the privacy issues? Because I think that's, and, and have two different state agencies kind of, one says one thing, once there's another thing, that to me is problematic, that yeah. we, we can't issue in a public space, you know, public spaces are just that, you know, yeah. and, and anyone, I, I could with it, be with myself and take a camera, yeah. you know, so. Well, it's, it's a safe lease, you know, I rent my, <laughs> I pay rent to the state for my building, the state building, so. <laughs> exactly. <Right. laughs> yeah. Would something but, uh, like a loitering, I'm yeah. sorry, Roger. Go ahead, Danny. Um, you mentioned like a loitering, or, or <coughs> I don't know that we've ever had one, but w is that helpful to so, you? So I, I think it is, right? Because, so say you call and complain, you're like, yeah, these kids are in the parking lot, they're doing whatever. Look, I'll say right the skateboards because that seems to annoy some people. <laughs> and stuff, right? So is it illegal? No, it's just annoying, right? So if you call me and, and tell me that, like, yeah, you know, if I'm not doing anything, I'm right there. I might go in there and be able to pull in and talk to the kids and be like, hey, you're, you're upsetting everybody, like maybe cut it out or, or whatever, go to the skate park. Mm -hmm. If they tell me no, what, what can I do about it? But if, you, if, 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 if it's an ordinance where it's like a criminal aspect or offense, and, and not that, you know, I need to be out here charging every little kid that's out after dark, it's, you know what I'm saying? But mm -hmm. it, it gives me authority to act, it's like, I, I bring back the thing about the, the homeless encampments, so, right? It's not criminal. Right. So what, what can I really do? You, you know, people are very up, very upset about it, but the state police doesn't do anything, mm -hmm. but it's, again. Oh. We do have a no camping ordinance. Yeah. <laughs> so in that instance, if we suspected something criminal like drug activity in that whatever area, you could come on the loitering call and then do something because it is criminal activity yeah, so, there. Yeah. Uh, and, and uh, you, you make a good point with we have a camping ordinance, but is the ordinance a, a civil town <coughs> ordinance or is it a criminal ordinance? It, you see what I'm saying? So, so that's 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 what we need to 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 uh, to address. To just okay. just to give a little teeth that I can actually go in there without yeah. you know cause kids know. If I go in, they say, it's not, what are you going to do? You're not going to do anything. And, and next thing you know, I'm on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> So I, I just want to just want to make sure that we're doing the right thing and, and also being, being able to help anybody out. Mm -hmm. So if uh, we were to uh, invest in a camera, um, would the uh, train station be a prime location? So I think I think we need to get together um, and, and figure out like where our high crime areas <coughs> are. We're, you know, and, and again, like I said, in a public space, not targeting a specific residence and just in public spaces and, and then and then you know if we're gonna spend the money ten thousand dollars not chump change so yeah. I'd like to target like high crime areas and, you know what I mean where, where there are a lot of incidents not some place where nothing ever happens. Right. Yeah. And then there's also the reviewing of the of the data. Yeah, yeah. Sure. So we'd have to we'd have I think you know, if that's something that we're going to do and move forward on, I think we could definitely get together and 
and, and cross those numbers mm -hmm. and look at that. Uh, Chris has his hand up and then Kane. Chris? Lieutenant, you mentioned earlier there that uh, it seems like just a revolving door here. These criminals, you arrest them, they go in, judges let them back out, they're back doing the same thing. Uh, what's the solution? Is it change in policy? Is it, you know, I, I, I was on the board when we voted to hire the two state police officers. Mm -hmm. And I've seen, I just had a cousin of mine die a year and a half, almost two years now, a year and a half ago, fentanyl, cocaine overdose up here in Waterbury Center. Mm -hmm. um, I'm very concerned about the growing problem uh, throughout the country and, you know, we are not immune to it. Uh, and we can spend all the money we want in camera surveillance and putting you guys out on the, on the streets. If it doesn't make any difference to spend all that money if they're just gonna keep letting them out. And so I'm wondering, is it legislative policy? Is it what's, what's controlling the ability for the judges? Where is the judge's mindset these days? And, uh, I wish I could answer that question. But well, I mean, is there a different approach than throwing more money that does, gets us the same results? Is there, is there Pressure needs to be put on some of our elected officials. Uh, it, is it money within government that's, you know, it's a, it's another business? Yeah. Uh, so, so with that, uh, uh, I, believe me, I share your frustration because uh, yeah, there, there's a lot of things. So I do major crashes for the state police, right? And, and a, few, a few years ago, we had a girl that was texting and driving. She killed two people. I think the Chittenden County State's Attorney like uh, didn't charge her criminally and gave her like a $200 civil traffic ticket for killing two people. It, you know what I'm saying? Like, okay, so what message does that send, right? And, and granted, do I think a 17-year-old kid needs to go to jail for the rest of her life for making a mistake? Absolutely not. But a $200 ticket or whatever it was for, for killing two people, you, you know what I'm saying? Uh, um, so yes, I, I think people need to vote. Um, you definitely need to, to, to put pressure on elected officials, I think, to hold, you know, we often talk about like qualified immunity and things like that with, this, with the state police, like removing qualified immunity from state police, but judges and lawyers have qualified immunity. And one of the senators at the time or legislators at the time said, well, judges and lawyers do nothing wrong. That's why they get qualified immunity, but police, you, you know what I mean? Like, uh, it's not a perfect world, but, you see where I'm, like, the thought process, yeah. and, and, like, who holds judges accountable? I don't know. Yeah, so I, I was going to tell you something. I'll tell you the same thing that I've told many officers. In fact, Lieutenant White, when he was there, I told him. And I had a two-hour conversation with another police officer here not, not too long ago, and I've told several officers this thing. And these people, they probably not want to, go to, want to hear it, but in my opinion, if I were you guys, I'd all get together, go up to the state capitol, lay your badge on the table and say, do you guys change the rules to start helping us? We're not going to help you anymore. Yeah. It's uh, because, I, you know, that's it, just the way I would be if it were me in your shoes. It's, it, it, is, it is very But to get everybody on board to do that. Because what's, 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 what's the legislative body going to do? Yeah. Huh? There's not a whole bunch of you guys waiting in the room to take your place. You got to anyway. Okay. Uh, thanks for your time. Oh, I appreciate um, What I was going to do saying was while we were sitting here considering cameras drones and talking about making civil ordinances criminal charges um, and just before that we were talking about camping because we use, it was used as an example of a civil ordinance that we have right and then we immediately transitioned to well what if we made this criminal um, I would suggest that the board steer clear of of mentioning those two things in the same paragraph um, where it would paint us in a light as we see houselessness as a criminal activity because it is not. Um, see what is a, a criminal activity? Camp, camping, houselessness. Homelessness. Oh, yeah, homelessness. Yeah. Yeah. homelessness. Yeah. Yeah. It's, not, that's it's, what it's not criminal. Like, yeah. Why should I be doing that? Yeah. Should should be. Be. Yeah. Uh, so these are, these, are yeah. folks, these are folks who are put in a position where they 
have to camp, right? Or they have to camp right. somewhere else. They're, they're camping regardless of wherever they are. Yeah. Um, so that is a, a, a crackdown on something like that has proven time and time again in cities across America to be absolutely fruitless. Um, so if we're talking about um, putting up surveillance in areas um, of high crime, I think we need to determine where in our tiny little downtown <coughs> designated district the high crime exists before mm -hmm. we go into discussions about surveillance. Right, and that's what I think you were suggesting, Danny. Well, he I'm hesitant to take more time, but it just feels important to say out loud. Similarly, um, you know, Chris, we share the concern and remembering that there's not one answer, right? Like, Lieutenant talked about some things we can do in terms of the justice system enforcing things like the young woman you talked about, but also remembering things that are perpetually not working when people go to prison for things like drugs and they're not necessarily rehabilitated or given mental or physical health services and then put back <coughs> out into the world with no resources, they turn to doing what they were doing before in a lot of percentage of the cases. So just remembering that the cycle, the system itself, needs work, what we're offering folks needs work, and it is such a huge problem that we're not gonna solve here, but I think we all are on the same page of working to make water very safer, healthier, and better for literally everyone, including the folks we're talking about who are going to need, you know, yeah. help. Yeah. Um, so it just felt like to wrap up that piece, you know, keeping that in mind. So thank you. Oh, sure. forgive my frustration. I'm done. No, I I share it deeply, <laughs> but just looking at the whole picture is important too. Um, uh, Lieutenant Wen, uh, you've you came uh, indicating that you've got staffing. Uh, so yes, restrictions, so we staffing issues. I figured you guys would get to that eventually. So, yeah. <laughs> um, so obviously, you know, I have two troopers that are assigned to Waterbury. Um, right now, Trooper Riegler is in Waterbury. Um, Trooper Rancourt was pulled from Waterbury to be an acting patrol commander in Berlin because I don't have I don't have enough sergeants. I moved another trooper in here. His wife just had a baby, so he's out. So right now it's Trooper Riegler on the 10th. Uh, well, I don't, I don't even know what today is. Today's the 5th? Yeah. So, so on the 10th, uh, I am <coughs> having a trooper assigned permanently to Berlin, and she will be the new uh, Waterbury trooper. So she'll, that'll okay. be where she'll, she'll be sitting. So I'll have two full time again. It'll be Trooper Riegler and Trooper May Murdoch. May Murdoch? Yes, yes, sir. Okay. So Trooper Riegler stay on day shift. What's that? Little trooper earlier stay on days. Yes, I, okay. I believe that's where he wants to stay. So uh, she'll she'll be here on the tenth, and then uh, I think she'll start maybe the eleventh or the twelfth. I, I don't have the schedule in front of me, but she, as soon as she gets here, give her the day to settle in, and then uh -huh. she'll she'll be she'll be assigned here. Yeah. Okay. Uh, this question could either be for you, Lieutenant, yeah. or Tom. So we have a day shift as Trooper Regler. Is Mur Murdoch was her yeah. name? Uh, is she mean night shift? Yes, correct. Okay, that's great. We do have quite a slew of complaints from Waterbury Center about things going on at night. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <coughs> yeah. So, <laughs> I, have a, Michael, I have a question. I know all these issues with drug issues, homelessness, probably are to a higher issue, but we hear a lot about the more mundane kind of issues, like speeding. Mm -hmm. Speeding's become such a polarized issue on a lot of our roads, and I don't know what the solution is. We've talked about getting the, uh, you know, the sheriff's department involved, you know, <coughs> maybe doing speed. Do you have any possible suggestions? Because I know you're fighting with staffing resources. We totally understand that, but any any suggestions for us to help the speeding problems? So I, th I think we could do a better job with, with traffic enforcement stuff. Like, again, I, you know, I, you guys tell me, I, I doubt they want Trooper Regular sitting there just hammering the people <laughs> water with tickets, but it, you know what I mean? Like, uh, I think just being more visible, um, stopping a few more cars, just showing up a few times, tickets. giving a few tickets. Yeah, it's, it does either a lot. tickets, warning, whatever, whatever it does. Is, uh, I'm looking at some of the numbers from September 1st <coughs> last year to this September 1st this year. I think they made 295 traffic stops in Waterbury between two people. Um, I know Union Flats, there's a couple other places up here. It's like, you go up there, it's like a, you know, racetracks, like Thunder Road, so. Um, and 
So I have ideas of, of what I would like to do to, to get out here and, and, and slow some people down and, and, and do some DUI enforcement and stuff like that, but it's just uh, <laughs> just having the, the troopers available. And then when I do have troopers, it, it's you know call after call after call in Williamstown and other areas. So it, it's difficult to get guys in one spot to go and be highly visible and stuff for an extended period of time, except for when we dealt with our friend a couple weeks ago. <laughs> Well, I know uh, my 17-year-old son got a speeding ticket on Stowe Street, and uh, that was very effective. <laughs> that, that really got his attention. Uh, the fact that he's still carrying a couple of points on his license, uh, you know, it cost us a couple of dollars, but, uh, you know, I thought, you know, there's nothing really wrong with that. He was in the wrong, he understands it, he goes slower now. And uh, so, you know, I think you know, there's a certain amount of that, as well as uh, the visibility thing, I think is yeah, really important. Yeah. I don't see a cop car, they slow down. Yeah, and I got something to I'd love to be more visible. It's uh, just, besides the Waterbury Trooper, it, it's hard to get guys to come up here and be visible when they're, you know, it's pretty much call to call to call to call. Sure, call. we understand. Right, so. Yeah. Understand. Yeah. But, uh, well, another question, I mean, you, you remarked on a number of issues with kids, and I'm just wondering, do you have any interaction with students at schools? I mean, you've got Officer Murdoch that's coming on. Would it be feasible for her and uh, uh, Officer uh, uh, Riegler to, to come in and just have a meet the cops day uh, well, that, at school? That's the kind of stuff that I'd like. To, like personally, I, you know, not that I, I I need to be or, or they need to be like people's personal trooper. You know right. what I'm saying? But I think that being visible in the schools and the communities is important. Like, like for me, just because I, I think it's a, a good thing to do for kids and stuff. So I like baseball for kids. Yeah. I umpire baseball, and, and you know it's like being a trooper. Everybody yells at you and hates you. So there's, <laughs> so, so, so <laughs> yeah. there's no question as to who's in charge. Yeah. 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 Which kid's yours? She's out. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, um, that, you know, I. I when I worked in St. Jay, that was a thing that I did as a patrol commander in St. Jay. I, I had the night that we, we uh, sponsored a t-ball game. We, we coached t-ball, and we were out there. And, and just as you know, a good way to get guys in the community, and the people see us, and the kids they say hey, these guys aren't bad guys. And, and uh, but I'd like to get into like the driver's ed and stuff like that, and talk mm -hmm. and put on some presentations. It's, it's just to find the time and the people to come in and yeah. And, no, I understand and staffing issues are tough, but uh, again, uh, we would be glad to help facilitate any of that that we can. Uh, yeah. So uh, maybe we can get offline or something and figure yeah. something out with uh, getting them. But yes, uh, I can certainly flex their schedules up to make it where maybe come in during the day or whatever and, and do some stuff with in, yeah. in the schools. I think that's important. Uh, Ken, one more question for you. When it came to um, dealing with juveniles, um, and then you mentioned the two violent crimes, um, is it mostly just nuisance with the, ju with the juveniles? Yes, yeah, it's, so it's, it's just, you know, it's nuisance stuff, but sometimes they, they vandalize things. It, you know, it's kids being kids right. a lot of times. And, and again, like, do I need to go down there and, and get, like, where are their parents? One, and, and two, like, you know, is it illegal for the kid to be out at 11 o'clock at night riding his bike? Why is that a police issue, right? right. And, and and when I say like consider making things criminal, like I I, I don't want to make anything criminal. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, uh, to get somebody in trouble like that, I'm just saying like if, if we're gonna do something, we need to do something where state police actually has teeth to act, not not just like a hey, you know, I, I'm more than happy to go talk to you. But I can't, if you tell me, you know, kick rocks, there's nothing I can do. Right. And, and mm -hmm. so that, that's what I mean when I say that <coughs> we should consider, you know, doing something like that. I, I certainly, uh, I got in enough trouble as a kid. I joined the Marine Corps. That's extremely <laughs> 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 that, that's, that's what uh, That's what I mean when, when, I, when I say that. I, I don't want you guys to think that, you know, we need to make all these crazy things and be fining parents and stuff like that. No, I don't think that. Mm -hmm. what's, your, what's your opinion on neighborhood watches? I know Waterbury years ago we had neighborhood watch and that kind of sort of went away. Do you think they're effective or? Uh, I, I don't really know because that's never been my uh, my lane, so to speak. Like I, I've always just 
they didn't need it on the road or in my product. And so I never, you know what I mean? Like this little ton of things new to me, so I don't have any of the data on that. It, it, I guess, you, you know, if, if, if a community comes together and, and they're invested in, in that, I, I think that maybe it could be effective. Because that, that is something, like, right? That see, see something, say something thing. Right. It, you know, a, a lot of times somebody will say, yeah, I saw uh, Mr. Kane uh, cutting catalytic converters off cars. Well, when did you see that? Three weeks ago? <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> you, you know what I mean? It's like, why didn't you call when, when, when you saw it? it? And so that that is important. Like, if you see something happen, like, call. You're not wasting my time. I get paid to take these calls. So you, you're not wasting anybody's time. If you see something happen to, to call, Obviously, but it's just depending on hopefully somebody's there that we can deal with it. But um, that that that's I think one of the one of the huge issues I think is very frustrating to people in the community as well as us is that people know they see these things happening and then they'll call us uh, you know a day later or 24 hours later or two weeks later or or send an anonymous tip a month later and which okay I, that's great you, you know what I mean but. You know, the evidence is most likely gone and <laughs> stuff, so it's, it's, it makes it very difficult. So I, I don't really know about the neighborhood watch thing necessarily, but I, I do think, does that make sense, guys? Like, yeah, well, like, and, mm -hmm. uh, your predecessor, Lieutenant White, came in a year ago and talked to us and said exactly the same thing. I said, yeah. you know, what, what can we do to help? And he said, let us, if you see something, let us know. Yeah. And I think that goes for everybody who's listening now. You know, just feel free to pick up the phone uh, and, and let people know that there's something suspicious happening. And believe me, you are not. I mean, yes, you might get a frustrated trooper on the phone or something, but you're not bothering us. That, that is literally what we're here for: is to listen to what you have to say. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, if you see something, say something. Like, let us know. Right. Right. Anyone else have any questions? Yeah, I got a couple. Yeah, go ahead. Tom. <coughs> um, so on the issue of juveniles, um, I know this was a sort of justice program based at a Barry, but you know if they're active in, in Waterbury? Uh, I'm sorry, you were restorative I know there's, justice? I know there's a restorative justice program, I think, run out of Barry. Do you know if they're active in Waterbury? Gosh, I don't know if there's, did you they? Had, I think you had Waterbury cases. I think there's there's well, I, I know the Waterbury case, case, but then Waterbury itself doesn't have a restorative justice no, program. No, no, no. 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 Waterbury cases have yeah. been is that yeah. something you think we should look into somehow expanding for the town? Getting a more direct role in that? I mean, I think I think I would have to sit down with restorative justice to see how it works. You know what I mean? Because uh, so even though they're in Berlin, they, they probably are restorative <coughs> justice for, for Waterbury. I don't know having somebody up here or, or maybe a, like a satellite office or a branch or something that might be effective. Yeah. And generally what they do is uh, they'll bring the victim of the crime and the perpetrator of the crime, or the alleged Sometimes, perpetrator, yeah. together, perhaps with some other community members, and they just facilitate a conversation uh, and try to make things right between the two of them and then get integrate the kid, as a, usually it's a kid who is the perpetrator, but integrated back into uh, the community. <clears throat> and I knew you had um, you had a mental health counselor embedded. Yes, we that, do. still that that's all fully staffed still. And I'm sorry. That position is still staffed. Yes, you can yep. really keep it. He's awesome too. So I hope he stays around for a while. <clears throat> and it's just one person, correct? Uh, yes, we have one that's fully. He's with us. Yes. Assume for a minute. Um, you know, the town's contract expires in June. Do you think one is enough? Do you think we'd benefit from having another person or part-time person there pay full the town funds? So, um, <coughs> so it's Nick is our best worker currently, and if Nick's not available or he needs help, like Washington County, he works for Washington County, but okay. he he's with us, right? That's it's kind of weird. Like he doesn't work for the state police; he just works with me, and he's embedded. Like he's out of our office; he goes on these calls. So when he is either you know off or uh, he's tied up on something, that, that Washington County does backfill that. So I don't I don't know if that I mean I, have to, I, I would love more better <laughs> workers. I, I think it's I think it's good. No workers are great. Um, I don't know that you guys need to, to spend money on that because 
You, you know what I mean? Like they're, they're already there, I guess. You, you, you know what I'm saying? Like Mick knows mm -hmm. who to call, and you know that's that's their job. So I mean, would, would it be nice for me to have another one? Absolutely. I think I should have six more, oh, oh, one per trooper. <laughs> For us to talk to us. <laughs> <laughs> and then, is there is there any sunshine on the horizon at all for the overall staffing challenges that state police are having? Uh, I, I'd like to think there is. <laughs> um, uh, so we just had a class. Uh, I, I don't know. I think there may be. We started, I believe, with 19. I think we're down to 16. Um, I am supposed to be getting two out of this class. It'll be the first two new troopers that I've had in probably three or four years at, in Berlin. So that, that'll be a big help. We're getting May Murdoch. That'll be a, a big help. And then uh, um, I have a couple kids from, I say kids, uh, they're just young, younger than I am. Uh, there's a couple troopers from different barracks that have requested transfers to Berlin. It's just being able to backfill them from their barriers just so they can get here. So, yeah, I mean, yes, there is sunshine on the horizon. It's just ones that get here. Give us, a, give us a break a little bit. But. And there are, I ask that because there are some people who have said to me that the town should be thinking about the day when we might want to have a third trooper. Would <laughs> 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 yeah, that be your response to the short term? You know, it's, well, you, I mean, you guys had a PD here for, for I don't know, years, and I don't, I'm not sure how many officers were, were staffed there full time or, or whatever it was. But yeah, I, I, I mean, in a perfect world, a full department, could we put three, four troopers in here? Yeah, I'd love to. Um, I, I just, uh, currently, right now, I don't, I don't know if three would, would fly. Uh, I think you, you, yeah, that would be, that would be a tough one. Mm -hmm. The, the problem that we're running into now is that these shifts are so short that guys are being ordered in or, and um, you, you know what I mean? Like guys are working doubles. Like it, it's happened so much now that it's for so long it's been happening. Guys are getting burnt out now. But these shifts are open and people are like, oh, look, <laughs> my wife. <laughs> yeah, she <laughs> expects to see you from time to time. Yeah. How is the staffing levels at the Berlin Barracks compared to other barracks around the state? Are you doing That's well? All, no, we're about the same. Um, I don't know. It's funny math. Like, you know, I, I'm looking at the, the vacancies I have, and I, to me, I have six vacancies, but the headquarters says I got four. <laughs> <laughs> right, because you see, like, Burlington, you know, has, like, a huge amount of vacancies. Yeah, but they, they get, they get uh, troopers out of every class, I think. Had out of Wilson, I think, I, like I said, I haven't had any in, in a few years. But again, that, that, that depends on a lot of different factors. Like way above my level, it's like traffic volume, call volume. Trying to figure out where yeah, you can staff people. Where, where do they need need to be? And I mean, I, I've been jumping up and down for a while now. They, they need to be here. <laughs> so, but they need to be, I'm sure every station can is doing that. So. Okay, any further questions? Yes. I just have a comment for the board on the idea of a lawyering criminal uh -huh. offense. Uh, I would urge the board to consider the role of personal bias in loitering and how that's enforced. Uh, you know, historically, uh, whether or not somebody gets charged with loitering or arrested for loitering can uh, vary depending on the officer involved or the person phoning it in. Uh, and so I would just urge the board to put a lot of consideration into whether or not something like a loitering criminal offense be introduced, especially considering uh, loitering is effectively criminalizing the act of existing in public, maybe in a way that's annoying to some, um, and how that can be uh, applied in an unjust way. Uh -huh. uh, so I sort of urge that uh, consideration to the board. You know, that, she does make it, uh, you make a very good point with that. Like, you, you know what I mean? Like it's not illegal to exist, and that's that's why. Like I was saying when we were talking about that, like you know, I, I'm more than happy to talk to you about it. But you know what you're doing? You're, you're bothering people and stuff. But yeah, I think I, I do agree. We should be very careful with like what we make criminal, because some you, you might get like a, a black and white trooper. You, you know what I mean? It's like per the law, you're breaking it. Here's your citation. It, right. You know, and so we need, we do need to. That's a very good point. You need to be very careful with stuff like that. I'm, I'm just 
saying like a, to make to make teeth. It, mm -hmm. I, I can't. I don't do so. <laughs> you know what I mean? So. Yeah. All right, well, uh, I don't know if we're in a position to make any decisions on this right now, but I uh, would uh, certainly put it in the parking lot uh, and um, hopefully get more information as to what has been effective. Uh, if you could, uh, you know, um, find some time to, to give us a little bit more information about particular criminal locations or criminal activity that is repetitive or of concern to you, um, maybe that will help inform our judgment uh, going forward. Yeah, perfect. Okay. Yeah, if you guys have any questions, John, get a hold of me. Yeah. Right. And, and I, know, I know if you guys have my email and stuff and my cell phone, and uh, uh, you guys are welcome at the Bears hangout with me and Sal. Um, <laughs> <laughs> solve the world's problems. <laughs> that sounds hey, like an excellent idea. idea. We'll bring coffee and donuts. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Do you guys have anything else for me? I don't think so. Lieutenant Wynn, thank you so much. Yeah, I appreciate you guys. Thank you. My name is Chuck. Chuck? 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 Okay, we'll go with Chuck going forward. <laughs> I appreciate you guys. Thank you for having me. Thanks, Chuck. Thank yeah. you. Um, Natural Disaster Preparedness Committee. Yeah. 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 Okie dokie. Last meeting, you asked me to define. Uh, the committee. <clears throat> so I did a rough outline. Um, five member committee that includes the select board liaison. Yep. Um, I proposed it, right, in this outline I propose a once monthly, monthly meeting until such time as the committee feels that they can meet quarterly. So they, when they feel confident that they don't need to meet every month, they don't. Um, they're Roles would, their role would be to create a, hand, a handbook specifically for responding to natural disasters. This does not mean to rewrite the emergency planning handbook. I did receive that question twice. Um, uh, create, create a system for volunteers for responding to a natural disaster. And I heard from Danny about this, and I've heard from Lish Slagle about this, um, who would be happy to walk me through. Um, Creating a system. Hmm. I can help walk the committee through creating a system. Um, and I think I was repetitive on these notes here, so I'll just skip to the next one. Uh, create and manage a stockpile of supplies needed for natural disaster cleanup. And then finally, work closely with Public Works to better understand the roles of the committee versus the role of the town. Okay. And our uh, emergency manager. <coughs> and our emergency manager. Yeah. Yes. All right. Questions? Yeah, sorry. Can you just repeat what you just said? The, all, all the of stock <laughs> as well as define roles of which three entities? Uh, work, uh, so the committee would work closely with Public Works and with uh, emergency. I, I, I recommended to Kane that like the emergency management director be like an ex officio member of that committee. That way, it doesn't have to necessarily attend all, all the meetings, but it should be, you know, you know that information coordinated with them. Yeah, or at least communication. Yep. Um, so that all roles are understanded, the role of the committee versus the role of the town. So is the, I, I feel like you said three things, but then town and public work sounds redundant. So is yes. it really just defining oh, the role yes, of the I town? Yes, so it just says work closely with public works to better understand roles. I was just breaking that. So I think with this outline, we have enough to go on for recruitment. Can did you decide on, or think about the terms? I know we talked about it, and I can't remember what we decided, committee term, like three, one or two. Yep. Three, I can't remember. <coughs> so for five with the select board, so there's two, or so there's four uh, roles that we need to recruit for. I would say probably two, two years, and two, one years. Makes the most sense to me. And you think this is going to, I'm sorry, I have questions, but sure. this sounds like a lot for me. Yeah. <coughs> you feel like this is going to go on long enough that it requires those sort of revolving terms? It's not like the housing task it force, it's should. just a, you know, My... like you don't have terms on your housing task no, force, you just have terms. 10 members that are working together towards a common goal and then it ends. Right. 
Um, so my initial idea for this committee was to keep get us to and keep us prepared for the future natural disaster. So as someone who cannot predict the future, I cannot uh, tell you when their when their job would be over. Right. Of course. Okay. But it sounds it's a committee in perpetuity. Yes. All right. Yep. Okay, so, um, um, yeah, Bill. Um, well, you said to, you know, differentiate the role of the committee from that of the town. The committee will be part of right. the town, so maybe you should say differentiate the role of the committee from municipal staff. Yeah, that's that's what I meant. The role of the committee versus municipal staff. Is, oh, yes, smarter way I should have put that. And if I understand, uh, you're looking, th this would be essentially a handbook on how to coordinate volunteer support in the case of a natural disaster. Yes. So. Chief. One of the things that I think the board, as well as anybody that's going to be involved in that, really needs to understand structure. Because mm -hmm. uh, I suspect there's not many people sitting on the board that have had even the basic incident command training. Um, there's a four hour executive training, there's incident command, there's IS 100, there's incident command 100, 200, 300, which you would not need 200 and 300. But, but there, those are all different levels. And I suspect that many of you haven't had any of those and don't understand and I'm not being too critical, I'm just saying you don't understand how emergencies really should be working, as opposed to, you know, we got one select board saying, well, we need to do this, and contacting the public works director saying, we need this, or contacting me saying, hey, we need to shut this road down. You, you really need to understand your role mm -hmm. as a select board member, and any committee that you create that's going to be involved in that needs to understand that role as well. Sure. Um, so maybe I can describe this better. This <coughs> committee is for post, not during. Um, so during cleanup, it is, it is a specific design for volunteer response post disaster. Sure. Uh, that again. Um, but the board is involved during. Mm -hmm. Right. And I'm just suggesting that maybe. You need to take some training. A lot of it is online. Sure. Thank you. Yeah, we should. <laughs> yeah, we should. Mm -hmm. okay. You did? Yeah. Thank you. Send me some links. Okay. It's, it's very simple. It's, yeah. It's not difficult to get the links. It could. They used to do them in person, but then when COVID hit, yeah. everything wound up sure. becoming, you know, you know, sure. electronic. So I think I think they're keeping to the electronic. You know, I think. Some people like the electronic, other people like the in-person. So I think they may you go to more out of in-person training. As, as a national instructor, you do get more out of in-person training. Yeah. That doesn't mean you can't do the online thing and still do you know, a, a Sunday morning brunch of bagels and do a, a training for your board and get more out of it and get more hands-on. Uh, and uh, Chief Board, what do you think about being an ex officio member of this? I, I certainly don't have any issue with that at all. Yeah. Okay. I, think, I think it's important. Um, <coughs> and it's important to understand how these evolve. And then, as Kane is talking about, the aftermath. Because the aftermath isn't the emergency. Right. And that can be handled certainly outside of the emergency realm. I think <coughs> Waterbury did a, a, a great job after Irene and certainly after this last flood. It's being prepared for the next event. Well, there, there is a lot of prepared things that you can do, but a lot of it is having all the supplies. We, mm -hmm. we had to reacquire all these supplies. Right. Yep. Yeah. And I, I'm, I'm not sure how long the uh, uh, Armory garage behind the school is going to last, uh, but there's there's room to create organized space up there, or getting a, a roll off pod and just having all of that stuff on there. Some things you 
you're not going to want to let set uh, dehumidifiers. If you let them set for a few years, they're not going to work. Uh, but there's a lot of stuff that isn't going to go to waste. And I believe that some of the equipment uh, would be uh, under your purview in terms of maintenance. Uh, would that be? <laughs> How do you like that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I don't know what equipment you're referring, um, but you know, the equipment that you had to do something to fire or something in particular large. We've had some, some conversations about things like pumps and generators, yeah. and it would make sense for those to be managed by the fire department. They've got the volunteers to service them and exercise them every so often. So there, there's a pro we can work on processes and where they're going to be stored. We don't have a huge amount of room uh, at fire stations, but that doesn't mean if the town wanted to incorporate that into some sort of, um, for lack of a better phrase, paid at night where people could go start these things up and, and check them. Uh -huh. uh, pumps, you know, you're really looking at not a fire pump, but a dump pump mm -hmm. that isn't going to get destroyed and you have chunks of stuff going through it. But then if they're not used, you have gaskets right. and stuff that are going to dry out. So that's the flip side. And there, there's going to be a maintenance cost. And we don't have a mechanic to work on them right now. So. And equipment's not cheap. No. A, a, a so-called dump pump is significantly cheaper than a fire department pump, I can tell you that. Well, I would just like to reiterate that the point of this committee is to flesh all of this out, <laughs> to make sure that we are fleshed out and prepared. And it is not it is not supposed to rival the emergency management. I it is supposed to be after emergency management has done what it needs to do. Natural disaster response, volunteers have what they need to clean the town up. Mm -hmm. And as I understand it, we wanted to get this sort of up and running uh, while this is still relatively fresh uh, in yes. our memories. Uh, so do we have a motion to um, open up uh, nominations for the four positions? I make a motion to open up nominations for the Natural Resource, Natural Disaster Preparedness Committee. Second. Okay, moved and seconded. Further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? All right. We can move forward, um, and you'll work with uh, Tom and Karen on this. Uh, uh, yeah, Tom. We had talked about a, a staff person uh -huh. for the committee. Sure. I'm not sure you need to decide that today. There was a committee yet, but you may want to think about that pretty carefully and make a decision there in the next couple of meetings. Yeah. Well, you're actually the municipal manager. Do you have any recommendations? <laughs> I think it'd be useful to have someone who could drop everything in the event of something like a flood and, and manage the volunteers, which was done so well by Alyssa and Danny and others. Um, and it was hugely beneficial because the rest of town government didn't have to do that, right. which, which freed us up to do other productive things. Um, I have a vision of a, a staff person part-time who go to these committee meetings, but would be that positioned in life where they could, in theory, drop everything. Mm -hmm. um, so I could write a, I could write a job description for that and try to figure that out for the next meeting, if that's the board's pleasure. Okay, Alyssa? I guess the two pieces is with appreciation came for doing this, and I didn't have time to get back on this. I think this is great. I'm glad we're moving forward with it and advertising. I think the two other pieces to me that feel outstanding is some of what Chief Dillon talked about is we've talked about an after action <coughs> report. I know Danny has done some drafting on that, and we plan to revisit that at the next meeting. So I will say I've been open to moving forward on this, but it does feel like I recognize that might be a particular staff or specific to the purview of this particular committee, but I just want to also hold for all of us, we have this question of long-term recovery. I had someone today introduce themselves as the chair of Waterbury's long-term recovery, which is phenomenal, and 
okay, what's the scope of that group? Who makes up that membership? We have Revitalizing Waterbury working on the Community Relief Fund, which is incredible, but just want to like, to me, staffing, personally, I would love to see what the full picture is in terms of this particular committee. If there is a long-term recovery <coughs> committee, recognizing the expertise of our local leaders. And to, to me, I would love to, I love that this group is starting to work out what is a municipal staff function, what is a needed municipal staff function that we don't have yet that's beyond capacity. Um, but I guess I would personally would want that information before recommending hiring for someone. Um, just rec And we said that at the next meeting, you know, we're not there yet, but um, just making sure, yes, there's this longer term piece, but those other considerations. Did you see an after action report to share at the next meeting? Maybe, maybe we could put in the parking lot the idea of having a paid staff member until we kind of flesh out, maybe get the committee going and see what, you know, different ideas are and, you know, then figure out if a paid staff member makes sense. Well, I don't think we need to put it in the parking lot. I think if we're going to go that route and the committee feels like it would be beneficial to the town to have a paid staff member yeah. for that, then I would bring it to the select board and say the committee thinks that we need a paid staff. <laughs> I'll take the, the park and I just need to be placed there until the committee okay. up and running. If nothing else, committees, volunteer committees gain a lot by being able to point to someone in the room and say, figure this out for us before the next meeting. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> Same. All right. Unless there's any more discussion on this, so we can move on to charter and meeting schedule. address this at last meeting and since then uh, we've changed the proposed text of the charter. Do you want to address that? Uh, since there was so much conversation about the one sentence about compensation um, rather than slow the train down here, which I think is headed in the right direction, let's just delete that sentence. My recommendation, um, Karen worked out a schedule. <coughs> I'm sorry, so which sentence did you strike? The sentence it's that we're no longer here. Oh, it's no longer here. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, that's why Perfect. It's, it's, it's been salaries. stricken. Setting the salaries. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, I mean, it seems as though uh, he already, uh, Tom already has that authority, uh, so we felt that maybe it didn't need to be in there. Yeah. Karen worked out schedules based on based on the law. Um, on Thank you. Thank you. Oh, there is there is an error. I'm in town on the floor. Oh, wow. you're in town. Okay. Okay. But um. Are these two? Can you just find me? <coughs> sure. I see so, you've done sorry, the dates. I just can't read them. So here you have the proposed date of the vote. So like 12, so we're working five. back, and I'm just saying my margin, I lost it a little, so okay. it's 12, 5. Yeah. Thank you. And then the first public hearing would take place on 11, 3. Thank you. And the second public hearing would take place on 11, 13, down at the bottom. Right here. Thank you. <coughs> Got so it. 12, 5 vote. So that's the one that seems to work the best, frankly, with Tom's schedule. Um, I mean, okay, so now he's disclosed he's on the 12th. I must have scratched that off my calendar by mistake. But that we'd have to have our first public hearing on the 13th, the day after he leaves, if we wanted to bump it up to November 14th. Got it. But I guess that is an option. So which one's your recommendation? Well, I mean, I would... I walked in here thinking he wasn't here on the 12th, so there was only one that would work. But so now he's either the November 14th or December 5th would work. Um, the only the only bind it excuse me the only bind it puts me in is that I have to post it quickly, but I, I have yeah. a week, so and I, there's still time. I think the fifth gives us a little bit of extra time. 
Sir, everybody needs to be ready. You'd like to have the election. And if, the 14th is the traditional federal right. election day, but there's no election. Right. 14th is election day? Well, I think it would be the second. Sorry, yeah. So, yeah. It would be the first so Tuesday. Yeah. Pointing towards that. Which is, I mean, it's there, but it's not. Right. Sure. Yes, Mike. Going back a little step, regardless of uh, the, the schedule seems reasonable, but have you gotten any input, free input from like <coughs> revitalizing Waterbury in the business community in regards to the 1%? Some, and I keep telling everyone that's what the public hearings are for. Okay, and that's, that's, that's where it's going to gonna be, the rubber meets the road is going to be discussed. Yeah. And if the input I got has, um, it's generally been either supportive or agnostic. Um, you know, I don't, I don't think, in, given how prevalent these taxes are, um, and I, I don't remember what I paid when I went to Boston and got a hotel room, but it's more than 1% on the bill. Um, yeah. It's not a plausible argument to make that 1% is going to deter people from shopping here. I'm not sure it ever was. It might have been a plausible argument to make when you're the first to do this, but all of our competitors have this tax. And there were a few communities that would probably be <coughs> deterred. Now it's probably, I think, most municipalities surrounding us all have these taxes. And I, I didn't have any data points at the last meeting, but the one data point I now have is RW did a marketing study. So they surveyed 11 businesses. So not every business in town, but it's one data point. Of those 11 businesses, um, they did an analysis, and 60% of their customers were not from Waterbury. So it's the only data point we have. But if that's, if that's the case, there's, in essence, uh, 5 cents in your tax rate that's paid for people who don't live people don't live here so. Um, so yeah Alyssa just to Mike's point I'm on the RW business newsletter list which you can sign up for too and they sent a special thing about our informational media yeah, on the 21st I did see so that. just to say I think we are actively <coughs> trying to yeah. make sure folks at least know what's happening and, and I agree with Tom in. that's what the public process is for is to, to, to those folks who do have issues for it to air, air those grievances. And so just to be clear, what we need tonight is to approve the re, uh, revised language uh, on the proposed charter and to set the dates uh, for the uh, first public hearing and then the town meeting. You set the date for the uh, special town meeting. So right. then I'm responsible for the Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, let's see. That's why I asked for clarification. <laughs> Alyssa. Uh, this is for Canada Business. So is 12-5, it looks like it's a Tuesday. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Is that because of time to count back? Because you need to warn it? Oh, I don't care. Right. I was just thinking, we yeah. generally meet on Mondays, and so I was curious why it was. Yeah, I don't remember why we went with Tuesdays. There was a whole... Tuesday's traditionally been a voting day, whether we I'm, like it or I'm, not. I'm, I'm, I'm excited. I didn't know if it yes, was more. Yes, maybe that's, maybe it all started with a Tuesday and it just kept rolling. I have to. Well, an 11 3 is a Friday, so I figured you might need to get it in on a, a business day. Like, you know, so that you're ahead of however many days you need. <coughs> yeah, and then. Um, 30 days before. Um, 31 days. <laughs> did you determine if we need to have a uh, open public meeting uh, or whether this can be done via Australian? I did speak to an attorney at the LCT who confirmed that the public meeting is just the day you vote. There's no, because you're voting by Australian ballot and it's the only article on the warning, there's no, we don't have to amass a public meeting. Okay. So you don't need to. I'm sorry. Charters have to be voted on by Australia. Right, right. Yeah, but uh, there was a question as to whether we also need to have a public meeting and get uh, moderator well, Kilgore involved. Right? Yes. It's a special town meeting to yes. talk about nothing. But, so uh, it's right. really mm -hmm. odd. So we, we resolved that one. Yes. So that's good. There was there one was. question I did So that would be done, done, done here, Karen? Sorry. I think I would, I haven't talked to Liz, but I, from my perspective, <coughs> 
Go ahead. You were going to say something else? Oh, there was a question on this about um, the second public hearing no later than 10 days after the first. If the charter proposal was made by petition, which this is not, so uh -huh. I had emailed asking for clarification mm -hmm. on that, made by petition, and I have not heard back. Mm -hmm. Just disappointing. I used that so, info at the ALC. <laughs> <laughs> Our assumption is. Our assumption it is no it's the same, but I did see okay. some clarification. But I didn't hear that. What were you asking me, Alyssa? No, I was 11 was a Friday for the first public hearing, which was, it seemed odd, but I'm recognizing now you have to do the second one within 10 days, and that's for 11 13, so I understand you. Yeah, it's, you got it, you got it, it took me a little while. Oh, yeah, yeah. It took some time to yeah. Tom was try to get to acceptable dates. Yeah. Okay, so it looks as though we're looking at uh, Tuesday, December 5th. Um, so that there doesn't seem to be any further discussion of the uh, language of the proposed charter. So do I have a motion? I move to accept the ch charter with the charter language as changed for this meeting. Is that all I'm doing or am I doing the date too? I want you to do all, all at once. All right, <laughs> and to Schedule a vote on the charter by Australian ballot for Tuesday, December 5th, 2023. Second. There we go. Um, all right, we have a motion moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? All right. It is set for December 5th with the proposed language. And we can move on. And then we'll just be kept in the loop on the public hearing. Yeah. Yeah. That's our town yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. I mean, these are. These are the ones I propose, so unless somebody tells me different. My only question is timing. I think a 4 p.m. or later hearing on a Friday it is like not actively, but in practice negating public engagement. Not that I anticipate we're going to have a huge amount, but I would propose if we're going to do it on the 3rd, we do it at noon or something like that. A daytime not. one? Okay. I just, well, especially if we do have another evening one, then having. I mean, that's my, I have reservations with a Friday, and I recognize that we're juggling multiple scheduling constraints, but yeah. I just <laughs> think it's not, and it's, it's hard because it's the first. And it, it says at least 30 days. We can do it on the second if you want. We don't have to do it on the third. Sorry. Oh, you could back it up more. Yeah. Yeah. So the first yeah. Because it's the 10 is the problem. 30 days for four. Okay. So you can, you can. Hmm? You've got it out the wiggle room, I think, the way the law is being built. And I wasn't reading, I was just trusting Karen's yeah. writing on the side. Like and then by that date. By that day. date. The yeah. yeah. only issue is we're set for 12. But whatever day you have the first one, you have to have the second one 10 days later. Okay. Right, so that's the problem. So we can't do the 13th, which is our, no. uh, it's not even our regular meeting. It's a planning commission. It's the second one yet. Um, you don't have to do it here. Yeah. We could do it at St. Leo's. We could do it. Oh, yeah, so again, I, I see my way. Like I said, I just speaking as a very enthusiastic local government attendee, I'm not coming through here at 4 p.m. on a Friday. So. <laughs> disappointed. Yeah, <laughs> draw line somewhere. So, just an observation. It seems to me that this is that like, this is really to get a local option. Right. I mean, it's called a charter. I haven't read it at all, so I don't know what it is. But a charter typically talks about how you're going to govern your community. The local option tax is, seems to be, from what I'm hearing, that is the big rush. I read the article in last week's roundabout. And I'm assuming that you're just trying to get this in so the legislature can act on it early next year. You know, I'm a little concerned. I'm a little concerned that, you know, 
Are we looking to have a community buy into this? I mean, the vote on, <coughs> on December 5th um, in an off, I mean, if it was the election year and, and you were voting for president and everything else, have a charter election on November 7th or whatever the date is, that would be wonderful, but there's no election. So I just want to warn you, if this passes, you know, I don't know, you're gonna get 100 people to come out and vote on a Tuesday in December? Um, so if it passes, then you have to wait 30 days. And if somebody turns in a petition 30 days after in January to uh, rescind this, then you have to warn another town meeting for 30 days. Now you're into February. So I'm not sure why you're just not doing this on town meeting. It just seems this is a big rush. I, I, I read what Tom and Teresa said, and I, I know that there's concern about local option tax. Uh, some legislators don't like it. Maybe this is going to disappear. And if this is our only chance to get it, maybe we should do it. But it just seems like there's a big rush here, and we're rushing to get something that a very few people are going to vote on. And I'm, I'm, I'm not upset about it. I mean, I'll go and vote, and I'll probably vote for it. I, I think the local option tax is a good thing, but I think community buy-in is a good thing too. And I'm just concerned that this is really being rushed. Well, uh, just an answer. Um, we have been, this has been on our agenda well, for, for two months now. Yeah, so, probably five or six months. Yeah, yeah, maybe more than that. So I, I don't know that, in my estimation, that's a huge rush. Anyone paying any sort of attention will have seen it. And we have been reaching out to RW which does include most of our merchants who are going to be impacted by this. Uh, in fact, the whole town will be impacted by this. But uh, I think in my estimation, in a positive way. I'm just still talking for a second. Sorry. Um, so I don't, I don't see that we're actually rushing into this. Uh, and certainly, you're entitled to your opinion. Um, but yes, we are trying to get this in line so that it can get passed by the legislature because that is a significant hurdle. And if we miss that opportunity, <coughs> we'll be out a year and we may be out forever because uh, our two representatives indicated that the mood of the legislature is to shut down this opportunity to mis municipalities. And that is a window that we okay. don't want to, want to avoid getting closed out of. Chris. So I'll jump on that a little bit here. Bill just kind of went through the process of how it would work with the 30-day wait, uh, wait for the appeal, whatever. That is the process. That's how it works. Right. Um, to your point, what you were just talking about, the legislative body possibly doing away with the ability for local options tax, I remember Tom stating that he said eventually the state will raise rooms of meals anyway. Well. We won't get 70% of it if they do it this way, if we get the local options tax in time and it, and it passes, we'll get 70% of what we collect, not 30%. Because I, I, I suspect if the legislative, legislature does away with the ability for local options tax uh, and then they turn around and raise the tax themselves, they're going to get the majority of it. That would be my reasoning for wanting to jump on it as soon as we could. Mm -hmm. And don't forget it takes the, it takes the state, once it's decided to allow the governor two full quarters to actually implement the tax on the ground. So right. the yeah. other piece is there was a petition, there'd be a logical revote at town meeting day. Right. Alyssa? I, can go first. I guess the other piece I would say is we did intentionally choose to only have these two articles because we felt as though they were the most clear and straightforward. So I would say in our discussion process, we felt like this was, as has been stated, local option and pretty straightforward municipal manager <coughs> hiring authority. And candidly, we had some impassioned residents at our last meeting asking about more comprehensive updates with EFUD and the town and this is your opportunity. and just to say at that meeting, and I'll say again, we stated that we felt like given that we do recognize 
I'm not saying rush, but given that it is a more compressed timeline due to the legislature, we felt it was important to keep it to these more straightforward items, recognizing the more storied or potentially more likely to be petitioned if other items were to be included. Uh, look, this is a typical case of where we, it's very difficult to provide everyone with information. And we've had several meetings, select board meetings that have dealt with this charter issue. We're gonna have a public meeting process. There are still gonna be people who are gonna be asleep at the switch. You know, there's gonna, probably not gonna be a huge groundswell of voting. You know, uh, unless it's going to come like when we had our town merger where it went backwards and forwards and we rescinded, you know, where people would say, oh, this is a really bad thing. But I, I think as what Tom said, and, you know, I was, used to be against an options tax because of the effect. But I've come to, when I looked at and researched the towns that have option taxes, there are so many towns that have it already, it's not gonna really affect our, our merchants. The, the only thing that's probably gonna affect them a little bit is having, it, changing their cash registers to you know add the, add the options tax. That's probably gonna be the biggest effect to merchants. And just to be clear, I'm not against the local option tax. I am concerned about going to the legislature with a charter and you know, it's a, it's a, uh, in the 80 to 20 vote, that's what I'm concerned in the town of 5,000. Right. So if you've already thought about that, that's okay. Yeah. I think we've given people so a chance to comment. We're going to have further comment. And then, you know, when people ultimately, it's you make a decision and you go forward. Yeah. Well, we have easily more than 100 people in the fire station when the uh, issue of uh, 51 South Main came yeah. up. Uh, yeah. that, that, that attracted a lot of interest in this too. Mm, I was okay. great. Yeah, there was a lot of people. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what your capacity is up there, but it was full. It was under uh, fire. Oh, 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 oh. Did you want to count? <laughs> <laughs> right at, I was wondering about I, that too. I had to count. <laughs> is that right? Uh, yeah. and, and Tom, I wanted to correct your timeline. The, First day I sat at this table, we were discussing the charter. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's not like it's a new thing. Yeah. Uh, listen, and the, I would say the point for us is I think it is a point well taken to say that making no comments as to who does or doesn't read or follow uh, select board agendas, we do still have an opportunity in that it's very early September for rather extensive public engagement, even more than we have to make sure folks are aware of the <coughs> November times for comment, but also just that it's coming down the pike in December once we finalize the date. Okay. Before you move on, yeah. I don't, we don't have to get terribly deep in the weeds, but if you don't like the Friday the 3rd, or if you prefer after one you held in the afternoon or one in the evening, if you can tell me that now. But do remember that they have to be within 10 days, no later okay. than 10 days after the first one. So if you move the Do one we, on the third, you by default you move the one on the 13th. So we have a uh, recommendation. Or do we want to just I mean, I kind of like the idea, if it is on the third of having it at noon, think about, you know, restaurant workers or people who like, wouldn't make an evening meeting if we only have two. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm not sure what other day, but if, if those dates line up well, I would be in favor and available for the daytime. So one, maybe that's enough for me then just to know have one of them during the day, during business hours, and have the second one in the evening. I mean, I'm only one opinion, but I, I would say that sounds that. reasonable to me. Okay. Anybody else? Uh, I have the third is a Tuesday. Is that right? No, November third. Uh, November third. Right. Uh, yes, on oh, Friday. Yeah. Okay. So you're talking about doing Friday at noon time? It sounds like it. Yeah. Okay, Friday, Friday at noon. Don't want to get into that crucial time period uh, towards the end of the day that Alyssa was talking about. Um, and then Wait, why is the afternoon a problem? 
Friday night is just not going to have, people aren't going to want to come after work to Friday night public hearing meeting. Or we can have pizza and do it up. I'm yeah, not opposed. Yeah. Yeah. Chances are, like, to the point of wanting to maximize engagement, that's going to historically be low engagement time period. It doesn't mean no one will come. It's just likely that fewer people will come. Okay. Uh, yeah. TJ? Yeah, uh, Tom Glor, I'm the uh, AKA Psychboard Junkie here. Karen, welcome yeah. back. I hope yeah. you had a very restful vacation. Oh, and again, I appreciate, I appreciate your return. Um, the question about the public outreach, again, like, for the record, I think I said last time, I, I think the local option tax is good. I'm not, I'm not adverse to that, but I think Mr. Sheplock had a great point. Is there, gonna, is there going to be another article in front page form or something that, or something of that nature that explains what, not, not just the local option tax, but what kind of categories are being discussed in terms of what that revenue would be used for for the town? Yeah, that would be uh, our, something that we would take up in advance of the first um, uh, public meeting. So is, but is that going to be, what I'm getting at is it would be good probably, or I would recommend, to have something like that advertised, because you're going to make the announcements, that's all kosher, it's going to be along the right timelines, but you would get more participation, I think, if you would simply kind of lay out the categories that are being discussed or something. Again, I'm just a rec recommending it, because not, not everybody is going to probably pay attention to that however that announcement the announcement's going to be about the town charter right is it going to also talk about local option tax the actual announcement that the um yes yeah that would be the idea we would explain the whole thing and what the implications are uh so that we would get more participation the warning has to go in the paper too the warning will go in the paper as well but uh i think uh, your uh, idea of putting it on front porch form is a good one or, or again, uh, something of that nature. I, I just think it's an opportunity here, right? You're trying to drive a timeline. Um, why not use all the um, assets that you're exposure or, or exposed to that people read? But. Yeah, no, I agree. I'll try to figure out how to put my hand down. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> all right, thanks, Tom. Uh, and so then. <clears throat> The other one would be in the evening, and which which day is that again? Sorry. That well, would be probably the 13th, which is a November 13th. Monday. Monday. Yeah. Not the Monday the 1st. Not the Monday that we'll be in session, but no. a Monday. That's going to be three Mondays in a row, then. Well, I, I, the, I don't want to be, I mean, I'm just seeing this, so I'm not trying to, like, undermine Karen's, like, can you do 11-6, which is a normal Monday meeting, and then the 14th, and then, since we're having a special meeting on a Tuesday every day, vote on a Thursday instead. I'm not trying to backseat. No, I, yeah, I, I, I agree. Karen worked this out. I just, it, to me, I, I haven't experienced a public meeting on a Friday in Waterbury, so I think it seems a little odd. We usually try and coincide one of them at the beginning of a... We meetings. We just have to have... Two of them that comply with Okay, that. so then never mind. Right. Then, great. So we can great. have ten of them if we want, okay. but two of them have, have to meet those criteria. Now until the vote, we can, we can have it as an agenda item and take right. public well, I will let you all yeah. satisfy statute, and we can do other. Yeah, we can put it as the first item on the agenda for. Uh, but there has to be 10 days apart. So. Well, if we, we have to <laughs> satisfy that statute, but yeah. we can talk about it at every meeting between now and December 5th. So we'll plan these two, but then still have it on the agenda for if somebody wants, somebody wants to. Okay. All right. So any change then to the recommended uh, public meeting schedule of uh, the 3rd and the 13th? I'll look at the dates again and see if I can propose something different, but leave the vote on the 5th. Okay. That's what okay. we decided, and that gives us the most time to play with the other dates. And we already that voted that one, so we don't have, <laughs> there's nothing else on the agenda there other than uh, what are we going to talk about at next meeting? We're going to talk about the first <laughs> subject. Yes. Oh, well played. All right. We had discussed, and I had talked over with Lish Legal tentatively planning 
before the next meeting, 6.30 uh, at a Bateman hearing. Oh, yep. Yeah. About 33 North Main, I believe. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And is she uh, okay with that? I believe so. I think so. She, we exchanged a very brief email and she acknowledged that date and time, so I, I think so. And uh, you expect that it will only take 30 minutes so we can start our regular uh, meeting? I hope seven. so. The applicant, um, I have spoken to the applicant. I've sent him an email explaining to him some of his responsibilities, things he should bring to you in anticipation of questions and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. I know that another local resident, Sheena Chadwick, is helping him. So I think she'll work to get him organized. And, and you don't need to make a decision at that meeting. You can reconvene. Do you think a half an hour is adequate? I think we should leave it to a half an hour. Okay. Okay. Right? I All think right. that's plenty of time and to so hear. Then our select board meeting would meet at seven or as soon thereafter as possible. Um, and we have <coughs> the um, uh, the thing that uh, Danny after made. action report. Yes. After action report on the Flood recovery, or is it recovery or? <laughs> yeah, response uh, versus response. recovery. <laughs> yeah, response. Okay. Uh, anything else? Uh, you? I don't know if you have anything. You know, we're, we're sort of. I don't have a draft agenda for that day. Blank slate so, at this yeah. point. Uh, so we've got uh, charter after action response. Do we want to take a look at the parking lot and see what's there? Um, what I'm seeing off is reappraisal. And Tom, did you think Dan Sweet was going to be ready to report oh, yeah. back on listers and um, potential flood impacts or not? Or do they need longer than this? Let me check with them. Their first conversation was complicated. It's not a, not a simple issue for anyone, I think. Yeah. Uh, Anne is asking to speak, Roger. Uh, Anne. Yeah, hi. Um, on your agendas, uh, this um, parking lot has remained the same, it seems, for the past couple of years. The, the uh, noise ordinance was something I requested early last summer. The parking ordinance has been on this forever, road salt use. Either address those issues or take them off the parking lot. That's, I mean, it just seems silly to keep putting that there. And yes, I know you have issues that come up that need immediate attention, but I think somehow you should be able to get some of those things in along the line. Yeah, I think we probably thought that they were in the long term parking lot. But uh, you make a good point. Um, overnight parking and it's happening now. Extended parking. It's like at the airport. Yeah, and I do think sure since we have park. what uh, looks like a fairly light agenda for the next meeting, we can actually move one of those. Kane. Uh, I was going to say we have um, lightly visited both the noise and parking ordinances and ordinances in general, and our discussions have ended in we don't have enforcement for those ordinances. Mm -hmm. So it would seem um, a little premature for us to decide on those ordinances or, or rules rather without anyone to enforce them. Yeah, Lieutenant Wynn here just the other, just <laughs> an hour ago. Mm -hmm. We did discuss wow. schedule of fees. Can we have your special oh, fees? Uh, all right, Ann's trying to say something. Go ahead, Ann. Sorry, I didn't catch it. Just if you can't enforce them, then take them off the parking lot. Well, in the, in, in, to explain, um, as Roger kind of joked about extended parking lot, I, I think he's being serious. There are issues that matter to citizens like you, Anne, and we care about those issues. And just because we can't come up to a clear, um, concise decision or action right now doesn't mean we don't want to continue thinking about them, mulling them over, or as new opportunities arise, taking those avenues. In addition, if more folks come forward with concerns about those issues, we'll know that they're there and kind of put another tick, like, okay, maybe we need to come back to these. So um, I personally would like to leave them there, knowing that they were important enough to come up and we just don't have a clear solution yet. 
And I understand it might be confusing because they're all in the same pot. And so I appreciate you asking for clarification and hopefully that helps clarify why they stay there and we don't just sweep them under the rug. Okay. Oh, our my neighbor and I brought it up. That's yeah. <laughs> it's kind of late in the season to address noise or limits. It was mostly concerning summers because it got We'll have another summer. Turns out next one, I hope. All right. It might come we up again. This year. <laughs> so yeah. Uh road salt use. Uh I did talk over with Tom. We're talking about bringing it up uh before the snow flies. So okay. For light next, next time. We could bring it up. You, would you roadside. be ready to talk about road salt use? We've talked about it a number of times. Yeah, we've yeah. got some, we've got a little bit of data from friends of the Minsky that I've looked at with, with Bill Woodruff a little bit. You know, in, in conversations with Bill, it really boils down to considering certain roads or even a road for a pilot program. Mm -hmm. Probably not flush yet. <laughs> You know, the, something I've, I've learned is you drive around the state and you go through places and you see signs that say, well, world salt. And in practicality, I think that's a sign, but not actually ro low road salt. Um, it depends on the operator following that rule. So I think we could choose a section, we could choose a road or a section of road and make it no salt. And that's easy enough to have our operators follow that. Um, that'd be pretty obvious for the public to see. Um, but the low salt doesn't seem to result in anything meaningful in, in folks I've talked with. All right. Um, adjacent to parking, we could do a more competent than my last um, five to ten minute planning commission update. I'm just recognizing that October 5th, they're doing a walking tour of the downtown village as a first opportunity for input for updated zoning regulations. So in the spirit of having that transparently on our agenda, um, I would propose that for the next meeting. Okay. For, I'm sorry, for September? Yes, so for our September, whatever number we're at, because I think it's gonna be the next time we meet. Prior to planning. Uh, September 19th? Yeah, it's not a, theirs is not a hearing, it's an informational thing, but that way we can talk about it. Or I guess we could the second, so, but we'll give people advance notice. Let's throw a 10 minute zoning. 10 minutes uh, yeah. update and you on don't the they rates. can't meet they're at their meeting i did go to their last meeting last monday so uh -huh. you don't need to invite anyone from the okay they can't them. make it that yeah. was my bad it didn't work out um, and we will put on road salt use is it is it premature of me to just to suggest that maybe it is time to visit the schedule of fees. <coughs> Why would that be premature? Uh, that, was, that was sarcasm. Oh. Yeah, no, no, we can pull it right out. I mean, we, this is a big shake up in the parking lot, but uh, let's do it. Uh, which fees? We did already amend room, this room, room use fee, right? Okay. So it's zoning, speaking of which, I mean, not to say, but a rec. <coughs> I saw an and a rec fee, budget. yeah. Is this the rec rate, does this feel right or should that be done with the budget? Rec, fee, rec fees are generally set by myself and the rec director. Yeah. Um, but some fees, the fields, I believe, were historically set by the select board. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I didn't mean like camp fees. I meant right. field fees. I, no, field fees. I should have made that clear. Got it. I was okay. Understanding. Yeah, I think that'd be timely to talk about that. So it's rec and zoning? I don't know if it's zoning. I guess that was my question. I wasn't clear. I think Neil had fees. anticipated, somebody had asked along the way for zoning fees to be looked at. I think he anticipates that question coming. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But would he be available to address that? <coughs> uh, with be us? in the planning commission meeting yeah. that night. But, but I'm sure he would give us a recommendation. Yeah, that yeah. Okay, yeah, he would give us a recommendation. All right, so I think that fills up our schedule reasonably well. Um, the emergency management training, is that what um, Chief Dillon was referring to? And if so, I can, could uh, you send us the links to that? That's already in my notes. Perfect. And then it might be it might be able to go on the agenda um, thinking about just thinking of more of a comprehensive plan. If we all do it individually online, great, but maybe a longer term plan of like every three years we do it in person, but then every new select board member does it online or something. So it could be, I think, a quick conversation. Mm -hmm. 
And Mike, you've done the emergency management training? Yeah, in I've done the emergency management director training. I think I did incident um, training. They're, they're actually really good. One of them actually, because it was crazy during COVID, I took the class <coughs> and they were kind of a little screwy. And actually the emergency management director gave me a personal kind of like in-person Zoom class. So it was, <laughs> you know, it, it, it was good because again, you get some of the things that are just kind of in writing. It just doesn't give you that flavor that, you know, it's, you know, some of that stuff could be a little dry, you know, and, you know, it, it is nice. I, I wish they had more kind of these things in person. Uh -huh. I think it would, would be helpful. I think it would keep people's attention a lot more. Might have a new knee, you'd be ready to go. <laughs> yeah. All right, okay. We'll throw that one into. Oh, that one's that. on there too? Well, yeah, it, it'll just, be just, short. Like you could put 10 minutes probably for that yeah. one. Thank you. Yeah, yeah just if you, if you go into the yeah, state yeah, emergency yeah. management yeah. site, they have a, the so whole list of different courses and stuff like that, and they give pretty good descriptions of what they are. Okay. Any further discussion on the next meeting? I will now entertain a motion to move into executive session. So moved. Uh, doesn't quite work out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I can't do it that <laughs> way. I'm waiting to Alyssa for this one. Alyssa's got to help us out. Personnel, he could have, but you mean us in real estate, so it's. Alyssa's the expert on it. Oh, God. Um, uh, motion to find that premature public knowledge of pending real estate matters would clearly put the town of Waterbury at a substantial disadvantage. Second. All right, moved and seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? All right. <laughs>